guarded and the military personnel will be in the room. Thank you. I'm very grateful, thank you, first and foremost, for applying for GEDF this year. Uh, I know we've had some luck in the past. We had a year off where GEDF really didn't get processed. But this year, it was a little bit late. And I know I was pushing everyone to apply and get out there and bring those in. I think about $1.4 million worth of projects. Um, I was able to fund one project entirely, which is the Fargo Road project for $100,000. And then the second project, which was McLaughlin Run, which I believe was $500,000 project, was able to fund that at $250,000. So very grateful, very happy. <laughs> a lot of hard work goes into the grant applications, the, the entire process, the advocation on, on my part. Uh, I'm just happy I can help out Bridgeville any chance I get. I do know the applications will be opening again early in the year, hopefully in February. I want to urge you to apply again. Uh, I'm hoping that I can help out with another hundred to two hundred thousand dollars help with the other projects. I know it's not going to solve every problem the Bridgeville has flooding wise, but every little bit helps. Uh, there will be some other grant applications available, and I hope to have that to council by I'd say the week after New Year's, if not before. I've been working on a, a few other things as well, but definitely some other areas where you can apply that will help with the flooding concerns here. Uh, I know I was here a couple years ago. I really want to make sure that we did something. So I'm very grateful, again, for the support, for the application, and happy to be providing over $300,000 to $400,000 for that. Thank you. Thank you. I, just to, I just want to say, Jason, you know, he contacted us monthly, weekly, status updates, this is what we were doing. Um, he was integral in getting this money for us. So I really appreciate it. I'll bring Absolutely, and hopefully more is on the way. Talking to as you have certainly uh, Mike Conley from the Parking Authority. I mentioned that I'm really concerned about that section of uh, let me put like this yeah. that section of Washington Avenue and Station Street where the Arco building is. The people that bought the Arco building purchased part of the area here on line. The, the, uh, abandoned railroad uh, spur line was. And uh, this other area, excuse me, uh, this triangular area here, that's the, the Greenwood property. I was going to say this drawing, I showed you this before without the red lines, I think. But this drawing was made by the Bridgeville Parking Authority, not me. Uh, but what I wanted to point out, my
Mike said that he had contacted an engineer, I'm assuming it was Ken, uh, Ken was that your firm? That was, were you uh, doing some work for the parking authority? Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. We had looked at another parking lot, not that one. Oh, not this one. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, what I wanted to point out to you, uh, if you, uh, um, I mentioned I talked to Lori briefly about my concern. Uh, the people who own the Arthur building, I think, pay one hundred and sixty or seventy thousand dollars just for that strip. And Lori mentioned to me that she didn't think it was going to be for a building. I'm really concerned about the fact that the building is placed there, uh, that it will wipe out the, the potential uh, parking needs of the, the community beyond the, that, that. This piece of land, the only vacant piece of land in the city of business district, right? <laughs> At any rate, uh, I, I, think, I can't remember if I mentioned this to you last month, but uh, I suggested because it was a similar piece of property in the parking authority, <clears throat> was having a problem with that was that vacant lot right across the street from the uh, post office. A doctor bought it. He was going to put a four-story building in there, requiring 40 parking spaces, which again would have totally overwhelmed the, the, the number of spots in those lots. By the way, I, I, Mike mentioned this to me the other day, which sort of shocked me. For example, he said in the biggest parking lot in town, which is right next to uh, uh, the Lavella Bean and that area, and also the other sh uh, sh uh, parking lot next to where the old PNC Bank used to be, that uh, I think there's 80 and 30 spaces. Half of them are already occupied by the, the people that live in the area, which means of the parking spaces that are in our public parking lots, <clears throat> only half of them are available to uh, uh, potential consumers that you want to come here to shop. And uh, I was going to say, I'm going to I would, might mention one other thing that's important to uh, uh, Ken if you ever get a chance to look at this stuff. But in, in this drawing made by the parking authority it is, is quite good. However, there's an important feature on it that I think should be made. This is the first Commonwealth Bank right here. I think that this alley that goes from the largest shop to the largest parking lot down should be extended down to this point. Because that would mean that <laughs> Incidentally, uh, maybe Road, Bus Line Road, and Station Street, the second most important road to the to the central business district in the community. And if by putting this a road which is a dirt road from here to let those people get to our biggest parking lot, they wouldn't have to go up here, hang a left, wait, hang a left again. It would be much more inviting. And if by some miracle the two-way couple is ever this would be one way it would get the right product to that. But, uh, but I just wanted you, uh, uh, well, what I was going to mention to you, because of the problem with the uh, vacant lot across from the parking lot, the park of the post office, and this one, I think I suggested that you guys uh, eliminate that ordinance in the community that says anybody that builds a building in the central business district, or maybe it's any business district, doesn't have to provide parking. I think it's a bad idea. You should make a, an effort to rescind that law. Or that or that break the ordinance. <laughs> no, I'm just going to. Can I break the ordinance and say if you bought away uh, from the uh, public parking lot, otherwise, I believe that's what the ordinance should be. Yeah. Yeah. So if you bought away, but they're not far away over there. So. Most people would think six feet. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I'm glad you're uh, familiar with that. Yeah, because I think the specification is. Something, but from it, from this proposed site where someone might put that building, that building is within right. Where it, 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 would, it would not have to provide parking if they're close enough to that one, and they're even closer to the one by the old PNC bank. So the, the regulation is still can hurt us seriously. But anyway, I just wanted to just be you can look for some information. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> All right, all with our uh, Motion to approve the November 11, 2019 regular meeting and November 19, 2019 budget workshop meeting minutes. Yes. Yes. So that, uh,
Second. Nino? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Motion to approve the December 2019 bill. I'll move. Uh, Second. And uh, Joe Putlow, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, motion to approve the December 13, 2027 and 2019. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to approve the December 13, 2027, 2019 and January 3, 2020. Payroll. So we're not ready for next year. Uh, payroll. Uh, Bruce? Second. And Dino. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion mm -hmm. carried. Motion to adopt ordinance number 1012, uh, Bridgeville Borough Amending Ordinance number 1005, pertaining to general rate charge for sewer services given to the customers of the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority within the borough. Uh, 2019 rates, Alpha Sand rates. Uh, $7.92 per 1,000 gallons of water used. The borough rate was $6.23 per 1,000 gallons of water used. The upper sand service charge was $16.69 per quarter. Um, the 2020 rates, the upper sand rate will be $8.50 per 1,000 gallons of water used. The borough rate will be $6.00. 73 cents <coughs> per 1,000 gallons of water used, and this alpha sand service charge would, uh, would be $17.86 per quarter. I believe this reflects a 50 cents per million gallon increase. Um, uh, the ordinance has, this ordinance has been fully advertised in the public hearing was held December 9, 2019 to receive public comment. So, uh, Bill Henderson. I second. And Nino. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Um, motion to adopt ordinance number 1013 of the Bridgeville Borough fixing the tax rate and levying borough taxes for the fiscal year 2020 and reenacting all other revenue acts. No increase in the borough real estate taxes proposed. The ordinance has been duly advertised. Joe and Virginia, all those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, motion carries. Uh, before we get to the next motion, Joe Verduzzi from our finance committee would like to go over our 2020 proposed budget. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Lori and the, the committee for. Uh, Sitting down and spending a lot of time and, and talking about a lot of different things uh, on uh, trying to think out of the box as well as trying to uh, um, also help the borough and not raising taxes. So, so we do we did put together a few slides to, just to talk about a few things. Uh, obviously, the duties of the borough uh, are to minister and uh, handle the finances, uh, support the police and the fire department, uh, the emergency management. Course, engineering and planning, sanitary sewer, stormwater management upgrades, and road pavement. Uh, in addition, we do have the other things like parks and recreation, the public works handling, things around town with uh, uh, the snow plowing and other odds and ends uh, jobs that are very important for the borough. Uh, making sure everything uh, is followed by the code enforcement, uh, support the library, and recycling and uh, waste collection. A lot, of, a lot of different things involved in the borough. Um, some of the accomplishments that we had this uh, year um, completed the plans for the McLaughlin Road Hazard Mitigation Project. Uh, the hazard uh, mitigation, as you uh, uh, saw, we received $425,000 from uh, Representative Ortite and uh, Senator Iavino. Um, in addition, we also earned $100,000 for the virus. Uh, Hill storm sewer upgrade, which we really, really uh, wanted to do. Uh, the, in addition, the, uh, the offices here needed uh, camera systems and updated computer hardware uh, to make sure we're up in, uh, in par for security and all, all of those uh, things that are involved with uh, making sure we're, uh, uh, everything is secure here at the offices. Uh, we also did some installation uh, of camera 
was on Fire Hill Road uh, that was supported by a grant uh, through the DA's office. We also did a uh, restroom upgrade, much needed at Chartier's Park and as well as McLaughlin. Uh, and uh, we did uh, uh, submit grant applications to FEMA uh, for uh, seven single homes and two apartment buildings uh, through uh, their program uh, that's going to total approximately $987,000. Uh, let's see, we implemented the, what's the HHW? Household Waste. Thank you. Household Waste, e-waste e uh, collection events uh, for the residents here, uh, which saved us a significant amount of money for the borough, but we also had one to make sure that uh, we had that available for, for, uh, for our residents. Uh, we completed plans for the Maple Commercial and Warner Avenue uh, retaining wall projects, uh, which will be planned on uh, hopefully starting this year. Uh, the MS4 stormwater water complaint work is ongoing. Uh, how many more years is that? Or is that ongoing? That's, yeah, that's forever. Yeah. So, uh, the pavement maintenance program, uh, we did Elizabeth Street and a section of uh, Chest Street is. Uh, we uh, talked before, we also had to delay uh, one section uh, that would be used as soon as the weather turns so we could stay compliant uh, with uh, the, uh, the requirements that we have with that. Uh, we uh, completed phase one and started uh, phase two on the back rows for vendors. Uh, and then we had another adaptive signals project the Washington Station and the Washington Buyer Hill so, as you can see, many, many things that were done and, and a lot of planning for this year uh, to be able to do a lot of things in the, uh, the year coming. Uh, as we talked about the Green Light Go program, um, and uh, the very, very soon uh, Chartier Street and Bridge uh, project that's set for 2020, but there were rumors that it might uh, be extended maybe six months or something. Yeah. But that's uh, something that um, of course, uh, with public safety, with the police department, they had uh, over 3,300 calls through uh, uh, November, and the fire department also had almost 1,500 calls, um, or I'm sorry, 1,500 hours of training, and had over 400 calls through November. So, uh, public safety was definitely uh, very busy uh, this uh, past year. Um, 2018 destructive flooding. You would think that we were done with all of those expenses. Yet in 2019, we had another $133,000 that we had to write checks for, uh, for things that had to do with that uh, destructive flood. Uh, so those expenses have gone in, and we have some plans for that. Some of the large expenses that we have in 2019 that we'd like to do uh, is the MS4 projects continue on, the sanitary uh, sewer project, uh, the phase one, I'm sorry, these were for this year, excuse me. Uh, the phase one backflow preventage. Uh, we also had uh, insurance liability coverages of over $100,000. And, and unfortunately, you know, insurances for, for that as well as health insurance and workman's comp went up as well. Um, flood mitigation, the adaptive lighting project, and the street alley repair. So those were all of our large expenses that we had uh, that was $928,000. We, the good part is we were able to keep that as low as we could uh, with the uh, uh, trying to create some reserve to be able to put uh, uh, a large number of multiple planned projects in place this coming year. Um, so some of those things are uh, the mitigation projects that we have uh, in the Glockton Park, retaining walls that we talked about earlier, and then sediment. Um, again, the MS4 uh, stormwater management uh, continues. Uh, the widening project, uh, of course, some of the other things we're required to do, uh, the sanitary sewer lining, the, uh, the hammering, hammering that word, <laughs> and repairs. Uh, finish phase two of the uh, backflow preventers and start the plan for phase three. Um, continue with the maintenance program on the pavement. Uh, phase two of the McLaughlin Park upgrade. We have to have that done by the end of this coming year. Uh, again, the Byron Hill uh, Road stormwater project that Jason was talking about with uh, that check. And then uh, we also uh, will be knocking down the building that we own that's right next door. Uh, we're 
hoping to have that done by the end of the year. Is that still the case? By the end, yes. By the and end, by the end of the month. year. Yes. So uh, in addition, we'd like to put a parking lot there. And um, this is something actually uh, I think we brought up last month. That we've been talking about for three or four months. Uh, it was putting some type of communication or sign uh, up near the borough to, to uh, have some communication in, in that way as well. Um, other expenses that we're anticipating, you know, all of those things that I just mentioned, that's going to cost around $2.7 million. Uh, so when we're looking back to some of those things, uh, where are we going to get the money? Uh, looking at, at uh, revenues from the last, what is that, four years, uh, we've done very well bringing in the uh, income. One of the comments I was going to make on the Treasury report is that as of November, we've already collected our taxes um, to budget, um, where we expect it to be, I think, through the end of the year. Yes, Lori? So uh, anything else that we collect, hopefully it will be more, uh, would, be, would uh, help us out in the long run as well. Uh, but we're anticipating um, with some of those different things that uh, we're actually going down in, in uh, or no, about the same. Or, or you're, you're planning on being about the same, correct? Yeah. With the budget. Yeah. Uh, and then expenditures, we actually uh, went down uh, in expenditures of what we were anticipated, which those monies now, because we, Lori runs a tight ship here and, and we're anticipating approximately $400,000 that we'll have left over from this year to be able to put towards these uh, projects as well as cover a lot of the money over the last few years. How much was that total? Over 600000 Over 600000 that we wrote in uh, expenses over the last uh, 18 months that, uh, uh, to get things back up and where they need to be. So our general fund balance, which if I remember our conversations, is is kind of one of the lowest points we were last year. Last year, last year was the lowest point, point ever. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're starting to get that money, and now it's going to prepare us to be able to uh, do the projects that we want to do. Um, so as you can see, when we're talking the 2.7 million, how are we going to do some of those things? Um, so in the finance committee, what we have talked about is we do not want to raise taxes. Don't feel it's necessary. Uh, we have discussed a few other alternatives. We're considering uh, because interest rates are so low. Um, this borough, and I deal with a lot of municipalities in my professional career, um, this borough does not have one cent of debt. Uh, we're considering possibly taking a loan because we don't want to prolong all of these projects for the next five years. We'd like to get moving on. Um, and get them addressed and not run into another one that we've run into uh, of an issue. We'd like to start working on these different things. So uh, we do have a balanced budget uh, of $3.2 million. Uh, how does that affect the property owners? We are not changing the millage. Um, so as just a reminder, there are two set, there's two instances of the tax on the property. Uh, there's the building assessment, which is at six and a half mils, and the land assessment's at ten mils. So therefore, if your assessment is a hundred thousand and broken into that uh, illustration there, then your taxes will be calculated in that way. Again, no property tax increase is proposed. Now, what does that mean for residents of Bridgeville? If you own your home and you're able to file the homestead exemption, uh, we will give you a twelve thousand um, dollar credit, which reduces the amount of the building assessment discount. Um, and in this uh, example, on a $100,000 property, uh, as long as you have the homestead exemption, uh, it'll be a $78 credit back towards your taxes uh, on your amount. So if, uh, if one suggestion, if you are a resident and it is your home, make sure that uh, on the Allegheny County website that you're listed as uh, uh, have the homestead exemption. In addition to the borough, you also get it from the county too. So definitely uh, look back and, and make sure uh, just the Allegheny County assessment and make sure that your property, uh, if you live there, is you're, you qualify for the homestead exemption. Uh, so in summary, 
Uh, the borough continues to plan for the mitigation product projects in 2020 after the floods in 18. Uh, mitigation costs uh, this year, just alone, were 133,000 plus. Um, in 2020, uh, will be earmarked to continue with uh, essential services to the residents uh, while looking to the construction of the mitigation projects in the floodplain areas. Uh, the projects are going to cost approximately $895,000. Uh, the Washington Avenue bridge widening uh, plan is supposed to be construction in 2020. We're crossing our fingers, but there are rumors that it may get postponed three to six months. Uh, but we also want to move forward with the McLaughlin Park upgrade, as well as the Byer Hill Road uh, sewer project. Uh, cash reserves are, uh, as planned and experienced an increase of about $350,000 um, with the modest approach in, in uh, tightening in 2019, which is why we are increasing tax. Uh, the uh, Finance Committee and Laurie are we're considering um, proposing that we consider a capital improvement loan of approximately $1.1 million, uh, which was proposed in the budget in order to take care or take advantage of the low interest rates and complete these essential projects instead of taking bits and pieces over the next two to well, three to five years. We'd like to try to do as many as we can ASAP to be able to, do, to address some of these issues that just continue to go on and on. Council, any questions? Thank you. Oh, Andy, you with us? Again, I, I want to thank Lori. She she does all the number crunching. There's no doubt about it. it kind of makes it easy for us to, uh, at the meeting, and then we have more um, <coughs> more conversations of what we can do. So I'm excited. This year is going to be great. We're looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully, it'll it'll be a way to yes, possible. Yeah. I was going to say, on the McLaughlin flood mitigation thing, what, what does that include? Are we still going to be able to put up those debris? Uh, that that's part of it. There's five, there's five uh, different areas, I believe. Yeah. There's um, a couple wall issues. Well, the, the grant that we got, that right. we received uh, from uh, Urban <coughs> Lorty Tide and Center Eyes right. Mayo will cover the, um, the lowering of the wall field. Yeah. Um, and the trash bag. And then um, we're also applying for more monies to do all the retaining walls that we need to do, yeah. including one over at Warner Avenue. Is, is that, I just remember, I may have come out of the gallery, but I remember when Virgil tried putting in those vertical columns to right. keep the, to stop the debris. We gotta do and it. Them, like, did, yeah. Is that okay? Not well, we the the applications are into the DEP for that. Okay. It's a different design. That design was not, was not permitted. No, that's fair. As long as we eventually get it, because the debris is an important part of the yeah, so some, you know, um, With that said, um, there's a motion to adopt resolution number 2019-15, Birch Original Borough, approving the budget for fiscal year 2020 and adopting the same. A uh, budget workshop meeting was held on November 19, 2019, with a proposed budget available for public review beginning November 10 day requirement for a borough clerk. So, second. And emails. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, all those like opposed? Oh. question is this to include the loan of the $1.1 million? Is, is that what we're. Well, no, we're not. Okay. 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 This is just a right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those opposed? Motion passed. Uh, motion to adopt resolution number 2019 16. Bridgeville Borough to ratify action taken authorizing and directing the council president to sign an agreement on his behalf with PennDOT for abbreviated corporate utility work and the borough manager, manager to authorize and direct to assist the same. Uh, this is for storm sewer utility work pertaining to the state Route 50 and Chartier Street widening project. So, uh, Joe Pasco? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Motion to adopt resolution number 2019-17, requesting a grant through the Pennsylvania Small Water and Sewer Program in the amount of $425,000 from the Commonwealth Finance Authority.
story to be used for the Bridgeville Borough Fleet Reduction Plan implementation and designating Michael Homer, Borough Council President, and Lori Collins, Borough Manager, as the officials to execute all documents and agreements between the Borough of Bridgeville and the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Finance and Authority to put, facilitate and assist in obtaining the requested grant. So, uh, Bruce? So, I'm me, second. And Nino, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. A motion to exonerate the uh, Bridgeville Borough Real Estate Tax Collector, Ann Marie, Ann Marie Parisi, for uncollected real estate taxes for the calendar year 2016. Uh, the uncollected total is $12,164.70. All those, uh, Joe Parisi and Regina Schneider, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. A motion to advertise and approve the meeting dates for calendar year 2020. Bridgeville Borough Council agenda meetings will be held at 6.30 p.m. Council meetings will begin at 7 p.m. and will be held the second Monday of each month except January when it will be held January 6, 2020. The budget workshop uh, will be held Tuesday, November 17, 2020 at 6 p.m. Bridgeville Parking Authority will meet the third Monday of each month at 7.30 p.m. Planning Commission will meet the last Monday of each month at 7.30 p.m. during the months of January through April and June through October. The May, meeting, the May meeting will be held Wednesday, May 19, 2020. The November and December meetings will be combined and held December 7, 2020. Zoning hearing will be scheduled as needed. So Bruce? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All those opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Uh, motion to accept any pay to accept and pay any commission to the November 2019 real estate tax collector report. So, so moved. Oh, good time. Mr. Nino and Mr. Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. Right. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the October 2019 treasurer report. Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the November 2019 police report. So moved. Joe Henderson. Second. And Virginia Schneider, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And a motion to accept the December 2019 zoning report. So moved. Joe Henderson. Second. And Joe Cosmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, committee reports. Bruce? Uh, one thing I have is to thank Ms. Lori for all the work she's been doing in that. And, uh, glad she's starting to be back on the net. And back with us. Uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, finance. I think I said enough, but I was excited to see that uh, the outstanding uh, real estate taxes that we had due, uh, over half of it came in in November. So, uh, Excited to see those numbers, and just a reminder to, to those that pay on a quarterly basis that uh, you yeah, have the end of the month uh, prior to penalty. Okay. Uh, parks and Recreation, Joe Parkin. Uh, nothing on the Parks President, but on the COG note, uh, the COG meeting this month is being held at Bridgeville, uh, the fire hall, December 19th, uh, Council staff are all invited in there. Uh, North Bay has a grab bag gift if you want to participate. It's a $25 limit. You can bring one, you take one, you can have a couple of pockets. But anybody interested, you're more than welcome. That's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Public Works, Nina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, if it snowed, we're ready. <laughs> Anyway, the leaf it's continued to be picked up by some point of What's that time, by the way? The time. You know where they stop doing that. Well, there's been many, many but leaves. I said I'm ready to point out on personal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. We don't have to actually stop with that thing. We see that it's more fun. I'll just call the people that pick it up. 
empty, fresh, uh, fresh, uh, uh, run on, clean bridges, clip branches, cut three parts, winterize part, you know, they're closed, right? Uh, remove military banners, decorate hunt for the holidays. By the way, the, uh, it, it'd be some, uh, uh, repair, vehicle repair, quite a bit of that. Uh, the, uh, the park, the, uh, it looks beautiful. It's a good job. Public work did a hell of a good job. Thank you. Yes, it looks beautiful. And other than that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Uh, sir, the then the Cook School is a Often the charger is pretty much. Uh, although I did see the Chargers Valley boys basketball team had their pictures taken at the block. Really? Yeah. It's not in the photo shoot. <laughs> All right, uh, public safety, Mr. Henderson. Well, Mike, I've got nothing to add for public safety, but if you don't mind, I have the floor. Um, I'd like to thank Mike for his contributions to our community and his commitment make the original a better place to live and visit. You left this council better than what it was when you got here. Thank you. I'm not going to find my spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that affects, yeah, that's a tribute, Mike, to your energy and your dedication. I know you more than most out there, and I know you care deeply about Bridgeville. I urge you to find your place to continue helping us improve our town. You have much to offer, and we're a better place for you involved. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Madam Mayor. I attended the ribbon cutting ceremony at Charter Valley High School. It was very interesting. The principal took us on a tour, some of us on a tour of the building. The chemistry labs were of the most interest to us. It's turned out to be a really big campus now. You should visit if you have the opportunity. Also, our borough tree this year is representative at the library festival of trees with pictures of various businesses and homes throughout the borough. So please stop at the library to see that. And I pray that all of you will have a blessed holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, Police Chief Chad. Thanks, Madam President. Uh, I just want to start off by saying I concur with Councilman Henderson, Brenda, and other people stated, and agree with him 100%. It's a pleasure working with you over the years. Um, <coughs> we have some community organized community projects coming up starting this Friday. I'll be participating for the second year in a row with the Asian <coughs> Shop and the Cop program. Children with special needs to the store and uh, pick out gifts for them with uh, members of the Chartier Valley School District. Also, once again, we have the Buddy the Elf adventure scheduled for this year. <laughs> the, Buddy the, Elf, the Buddy the Elf adventure will be on Sunday, December 22nd, probably around 11 o'clock. Yeah, the left one, but depending when he gets here from yes. the North Pole, I don't know what kind of entrance he's going to make this year. It's hard to tell. So, uh, following. Whatever uh, Buddy gets into, we'll be meeting once again at the Dairy Light parking lot with the fire department, and uh, we should have several gifts that we're able to pass out to any child that shows up, so spread the word. Uh, we like to put it out there. You don't have to be from Bridgeville. They can come from anywhere. Uh, we have generous toy donations coming once again from the Pittsburgh area Toys for Tights and from the Western Pennsylvania Athletic League Stuff and Store program. So along with that, probably next week, one day, I'll take some time and actually deliver toys to the, the kids in the local daycare or something again also. So, that's all I have. Um, before we go to solicitor, I just want to congratulate uh, uh, Chad for being engaged and talking the questions. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and it sounds like it's going to be a big event. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. All right, uh, solicitor. Uh, thank you. You have my red report. I would like to thank you for joining Bruce and Mayor Copeland, wishing everybody the best things um, for the Christmas season, the holiday season. I'd like to join Mr. Henderson in the um, sentiments regarding the approach and all the business of the union. <coughs>
question for yes. us or two. Sure. Um, can I, uh, uh, you had, uh, last month we had asked you to provide a formal opinion on that issue, uh, on an issue. Uh, what's the time frame on that you would want to go there right now? Okay. Is that next month? Yeah, I'm happy to go next month. And then uh, just as a request on, on your report, would you be able to provide that to us three days prior so we can review it ahead of time? Thank you. Uh, for our engineer. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I've just updated on a few of the projects since there are quite a few uh, pending. Uh, we have spent the quite a few grants and obviously we've seen, you know, we've seen confirmation on a few of them. The 2020 road program, uh, we plan on meeting with you guys through committee uh, in January, February, whatever works for you, and uh, get that out to date for March, uh, probably late March, to take action on those April meetings. Uh, 2019 roads, uh, that project uh, was delayed whether the contractor wanted to mow the end uh, by the 7th or 8th. Uh, that's when the weather turned bad and we talked to different stewards. And um, they really had to have days that were above 20 degrees consistently. Uh, that was a bigger risk um, since that was a continuous on this, on this project. So we did recommend that we would delay it until next year. So we'll complete that until next year. Um, 2015 roads, there was a complaint um, out there in the mall. We did uh, notify bonding company, we have received a response from P.A. Robinson, and we're going to schedule a meeting with them. Um, I don't think they're going to do any of the repairs, uh, but we're going to go through the motions at least to see if we can get into the, uh, at least past. Uh, they have some pretty good documentation they provided um, on the work that's going to be made, that they met the specifications. Um, so we'll run through that process with them. <coughs> right now I don't have it on a high percentage that we would be successful in getting that work fixed. If not, then Next is the public works project. Um, the ones that were on the grant uh, funding uh, was uh, Janet Way, the Commercial Street Culvert Cleaning, uh, Channel Cleaning, uh, Lowering of the Ball Field, and the Trash Rack. Um, Janet Way Ramps, uh, the permit has been issued on that under the revised plans. The um, Culvert Cleaning, um, we're going to be uh, addressing DEP on that, but they've had questions throughout, and we do believe that permit's going to be able to be issued. Sample Street Ball permit has been issued. Um, we're meeting with PA uh, next week on Wednesday. We're going to review the uh, trash racks and the blocking run, and then we're going to be the ones to address those problems moving forward. Um, we did receive the Army Corps model about two months ago. Um, we do have that in the system now. We have updated it with all these projects. Also looking at uh, the wall on the side of Borough Building that runs from the uh, ice cream shop down. Um, we're actually picking up some more surveys. We've actually picked up the first piece. Um, it looks like the wall should be extending all the way down and actually tie into the railroad embankment. Um, it's not very high. It'll be surprising when you look at the model. Um, but it's going to be four foot maybe. Um, and it looks like you should use some stream improvements to get more volume um, because what happens is the channel backs up and we push up the other way. Everybody sees that. Um, so we, uh, we need to make sure that the elevation uh, needs to be uh, as part of the long-term solution maybe um, some pumps on the bottom part of town that would actually lift the water level at the top of it. Um, it's considered to be a levee at that point. Mm -hmm. And from a low area in town, uh, we pump the water out from the borough building area and we pump it up. But you have to have redundant pumps. There's a system of screw pumps that move a lot of volume of water quickly, um, that it's something that there is projects once you have the levy design. Uh, the CFA program that we just submitted for, they have a flood mitigation one for the levies. Um, you have to have a study done first to prove that it uh, would work, and then you can submit for actual long-term grant funding for that project. Um, but just looking at the uh, early finding, uh, it is a project that we could be successful in um, limiting the amount of flooding that we see on the bottom part of town once you build the levee. But you have to put the pumps in. Once you build the levee, the water can't get out. you got to lift it. Um, Where does it go 
segment, uh, I guess what we're looking at, um, the upper parts of town, uh, we're just now starting to look at some different solutions through there, including the properties that uh, we're going to be $975,000, um, what, what we can do with those properties to help the situation through that part. It's very constricted through there because it's very narrow, um, so we have to look at how to make that better than it is today. Um, we also have an option that we're looking at. Tonight, you did uh, pass a resolution uh, for the PRP plan. Uh, that was $425,000. You have four storm sectors um, that are spec on your MS4 program. Um, they're totaling about $80,000, $90,000 somewhere in there. Um, the other part of that is for street sweepers. You have street sweepers that, for your MS4 program, one of the items you had was a street slash vacuum. They're very expensive. Um, they're $300 plus or minus $1,000. Your program is you're going to sweep 26 times a year each street in the borough. Um, is what was included with last year's 2018 cement. Um, <coughs> and you have a tune out your catch basin. So that piece of the program is going to be built. Um, so that part of that grant. Um, at some point, um, we want to look and see if there's other grants out there for that same piece. If you don't get funding, we will. So we may only get partial funding, so we want to keep our eye out for uh, a grant that can buy a piece of Street sweeping. It's a special kind. It's not just an engine that goes around the weekend. It has to have a vacuum on it, and you have to get a certain amount of particulate that it goes up. So, um, so I mean, we would have to do the <coughs> cost anyway. Yeah. Or is that just? That's a little onerous. We're going to work for you. Don't have to do some of the elements that's in there, but um, we'll get through this permit cycle and the next one. Yeah, yeah, and do some right. other suggestions. So. Um, PDBG, um, the restroom projects, they're down to the doors. They had a little bit of lighting. I think they got the lighting done. Um, and the backflow printers they did start. They got five completed. Um, next month, it's going to pay request funding. We have some pictures of what they have done. Completed. We'll also have pictures of the restroom project. Um, it doesn't keep them, it just brings in public works. Um, so when we have our meeting uh, with public works, we should talk about sequencing that so that when it opens in the springs, um, and we get some good weather, it's going to take some of the things. So that's all I have. Any questions? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Cameron, you see the contract there is pitching you, Mr. Chairman. Have you signed the change of order yet? I don't think he sent it back yet. I sent it uh, from three, four weeks ago. He has agreed to it. Um, they, knew, they knew whatever we were with uh, when we were signing so, it. So the signature would be no problem with that. Yeah, the paperwork's been a little slow. The yeah. contract is just well, fine. Thank you. Trying to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have it for next month. So. Thank you. Uh, Fire Chief Ray. Thank you, Council President. Um, the month of November was not as busy as. Uh, the rest of the months of the year, fortunately, uh, we finished the month with 33 uh, working incidents, two of which were structure fires. Um, so we've been averaging about 50 to 57 calls per month, so you can see that number significantly down, which we're grateful. Um, 
of the 1,417 uh, training hours, uh, we have several folks that are in the uh, Firefighter Essentials Program. Uh, what that is, it's the initial part of the certification to become an interior firefighter. And from that, you go on to your Pro Board Firefighter 1. Uh, our goal for 2020 is to have 100% of our members uh, complete the Pro Board Firefighter 1 tra training by the month of April. Uh, that class and testing is set up already. Uh, we are also looking to uh, add, as we all know, Bridgeville floods, unfortunately, frequently. Uh, we're looking to send 12 to 15 members along with other call departments within the Charter West uh, to swift water rescue training. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. And uh, last but not least, the Santa detail. After Bunny the Elf, uh, Bunny the Elf uh, is complete, we're going to start the detail about that. Uh, Uh, Anne's not here, uh, Mary's not here, anybody? Mary's not here. Um, Ray, to the library. Our year in flyer went out to everyone and we got this flyer in the mail. That was a pre year in donation on the past week. Last week I attended a meeting with Pam Ardino. She invited all the libraries in their history to a lot of people discussion. Talk about the various libraries. I attended that representing the original library. It was a uh, nice discussion. Got to meet the personnel from the other libraries. And Pam said she would do whatever she could for the libraries. She was looking into it. So. She posted something on Facebook the other day. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Uh, Paul with the mayor said we did have a special treaty going on in conjunction with the <coughs> Friends of the Library, right now through the 14th. 14th, we have Santa coming. And Friday night, I just gave away some flyers. We're having a wine and chocolate event there at the library. We're having my sweets, uh, chocolate job, and a PK wine at McDonald's. A little fundraiser for us for Friday night. We'll see how that goes. The first attempt at doing something like that. Is that Friday the 13th. So, since this is your the mayor said, you know, go out here, look at the tree, pick out the tree, vote, vote off for your favorite tree. So, that's all I got. No, I am not. Uh, manager Paul. Um, I provided my written report and any of these questions or comments. Um, also, I'd like to say it's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Where, where are we with the uh, county hall? Um, the, I sent all the communications to Tom's office. Um, they're going through it now. We talked about what the letter of person Yeah, we're done. We're the process. So I'm going to let you go on the next couple of days. Is it that place in there on those? Yeah. Uh, old business. New business? I just wish you the best of luck. Thanks for uh, working so hard for the firm.